hockey heads, degenerate gamblers, and fantasy fanatics. Welcome back inside the official lab for your source for fantasy hockey news and off-season breakdowns, the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast. Thank you for joining us for the Wednesday episode where we have to continue to dive into the free agency frenzy. But from the other angle, what UFAs are still out there that can affect the impact of your fantasy squad, Tarasenko, Kane, and others. We're going to get all to it on this hump day episode. Thank you for joining us. Your Locked On Fantasy Hockey, your daily podcast on fantasy hockey. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back inside the lab, everybody, and happy hump day. Like I said off the top, the fantasy frenzy continues in the offseason in the NHL, pending from all the free agency news that we've seen trickle down the wire. Thank you for making us your first listen every single day. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On today to get started. Steel, first of all, before we dive into anything about all of the remaining UFAs out there, which actually is potentially the most intriguing conversation you and I are going to have all week because some of these names, I think, with the right fitting, could still bring a ton of fantasy value. And I'm intrigued to hear what you have to say about that today. But shout out to everyone holding us down Monday through Friday across all the platforms. Steel and I saw today we cracked into the top 25 fantasy and hockey podcasts in Canada. We couldn't do that without the listeners out there. So let's keep pushing. And I hope we can continue to help you dominate those fantasy leagues. And today's show, Steel, I hope we can do a little bit more of that. Vladimir Tarasenko, Patrice Bergeron. Patty Kane. You see the names up there if you are tuning in on YouTube. But to kick off the show, let's talk very quickly about Max Domi. Because this is, of course, it's close to the heartstrings for us, Steele, as Toronto Maple Leafs fans. And I hope we'll talk about that very quickly. But he is bringing some fantasy value here. 55 plus points last year, I believe. And played very well both in Chicago when nothing mattered and when it mattered the most for the Dallas Stars. Hit me with your take on the addition of Max Domi and what Mr. Treliving continues to do with this roster. Yeah, I think there's obviously a clear uh, pathway that Brad Treliving is making with his offseason acquisitions and a clear aspect of the game that was missing over the last few years for this Toronto Maple Leafs team. And he said it himself. He likes the snottiness of how mm. this team is looking this offseason so far. The, you know, Ryan Reeves, Tyler Bertuzzi, and Max Domi have that great physicality being able to get under their opposition skin and get them, uh, you know, antagonize antagonizers out there on the ice. So I, again, I really like what Brad has done so far this off season, changing a little bit of the uh, game style and, and sit and players that are in the dressing room and have, can have that change in the dressing room. Mm -hmm. Obviously with Max Domi's father's played for the Toronto Maple Leafs and the, played for the Toronto Maple Leafs in the past. So it's going to hit home and it feels great for Max Domi and, we're seeing these guys sign the, these, uh, you know, one year small term contracts, $3 million, $4 million, because they know mm -hmm. if they have a good season with these Leaf players like Matthews, Nylander, Marner, they're up for a huge payday that, that they can cash in on. And Max Domi is hoping that a one year, $3 million contract with the Leafs now can set mm -hmm. him up, set him up for a longer term contract with the Leafs because he wants to stay here. Uh, and there's no question about that, that he wants to stay in Toronto. But what does it mean fantasy-wise? Max right. Domi had a really good season last year. He did. You know, um, going over from the Chicago Blackhawks to the Dallas Stars at the trade deadline, he struggled a bit in Dallas. Obviously, it's a change of scenery. He's playing on the third line there. He's not getting as much minutes. He only had seven points in 20 games for the Dallas Stars, but... Uh, you know, after the trade deadline, the entire season, he had 56 points in 80 games. So a mm -hmm. pretty good season for Max Domi. And then he stepped it up, stepped it up huge time in the playoffs. He three did. goals, 13 points in 19 games for the Dallas Stars. In the he was great. So he was fantastic. And again, he's one of those guys that he gives you a different element of his game. Uh, so many times when he's on the ice. If you want him to drop the gloves and fight, he'll do that. If you want him mm. to go out there and antagonize the opposition, he'll do that. 
He can mm. score some goals. He can pass mm-hmm. the puck a little bit. Again, the uh, the Max Domi and Mitch Marner having that connection from the London Knights and the OHL could spark again another aspect of the offensive production for both those players. I think that all that really matters, aside from the obvious, hey, I got to say it, Steele, as a guy who really remembers Ty Domi playing a lot on the ice, I know you <laughs> rep respect and recognize what Ty Domi means, but I remember what watching Ty Domi every night meant. And seeing Max come back, it's mixed emotions. I have my dad in my DMs who never sends me Instagram messages about hockey takes anymore because he understands how heated we can get. Talking about how he's unsure about bringing in Max Domi is the answer that this club needs. Is my dad the forecaster that all fantasy fans <laughs> need to hear from? No, but I think it's a good thing for his fantasy value. If I'm putting aside all the heartstrings for a second here, let's pay attention to what he's going to be able to do. He put up really good numbers. I know he got to play you know, with some good players in Chicago for the most part. Yep. If he gets any mix with Matthews, any mix with Marner, he might slot in on that second line with Johnny T. His value goes up, especially because you know he's going to be wearing his heart on his sleeve. For this club, that means so much to him. And rarely do you get to see these moments where, you know, Max Domi's dad, Ty, posts the, the photo and all that. And it's awesome. Let's see what you can do on the ice. Let's see if it can really mean something tangible because I'm already over all the sentimental la la BS. And at the end of the day, still, you mentioned it. Uh, what was it for him last year? Overall, 20 goals, 36 assists, 56 points. There is value there. 82 penalty minutes, 179 shots. The rest of the peripherals leave some to be desired, of course. So I'm not necessarily saying that this might be given the format. I don't even know if you go out there and draft him, but I think you keep an eye on him as one of those flyers at the end of your draft. And I know we've said this a lot about these players, but that's because this is the mix that's out there. Anyway, I like the signing steel. I like the grittiness. A lot of goals went out the door the other day for the Toronto yeah. Maple Leafs. They bring in a few more here. They bring in another guy who plays with a bit of edge. Let's see what happens if you're good, though. Let's kick off this conversation quick before we get to break by talking about the number one name out there, in my opinion, Vladimir Tarasenko. Yeah, Vladimir Tarasenko. There's still a few names out there. Patrick Kane sure. being one of them. Patrice Bergeron, Matt Patty Dumba, Kane. Martin My Jones. bad. I see Patty there, Kane at the top of the list now. That's my bad. There are a few guys, but there's some big names. All big names. And, you know, again, guys who are um, have been in the league for so long now. They're just statement guys in the NHL. Let's start with Vladimir Tarasenko, mm. though. Obviously being traded from the St. Louis Blues to the New York Rangers uh, last year at the trade deadline or last season at the trade deadline. Unfortunately for both the the Rangers, their fans, and Tarasenko, a very quick exit in the postseason. But no matter where he goes, again, this is always Mm -hmm. a guy I like to go back to. And for me, I always get him, I feel like, in the perfect round. I don't reach. I don't let him drop too late. Well, you know, Obviously, if I can get him later, Mm -hmm. that'd be great. But I never reach on this guy. I got him, you know, over the last few seasons, you know, trying in a bounce back year. I love this player fantasy wise. And he's always one of those guys that I look to every single season to get. Yeah, he's, and to me still, there's been a couple of injury blips, obviously, right? Like he's dealt with some serious injury and still being able to put up impressive offensive numbers. I think gone are the days or the expectations that we can see the 75, 74, 73 point totals. But where he lands is where the most intriguing angle comes for me with Vladimir Tarasenko. As in, if he has gone, like, you know, the rumors are out there with the Ottawa Senators, that intrigues me the most. If he lands in the top six in Ottawa, where he really doesn't have to carry that load steal, right? That goes to Drake Batherson. It goes to Brady Kachuk. It goes to Timmy Stutz. And it even goes to some of the guys on the blue line to carry and lead that team. Vladimir Tarasenko coming into the mix, especially if they do lose an edge like the Brinkett. All of these dominoes have yet to fall. So we're spitballing and I'm being quite hypothetical in nature. But I think where the value lies the most with Vladimir Tarasenko is if you can get him after he signs with the right team. Because if he goes to a team where he has to maybe shoulder more of that veteran load, I don't love it as much. I hope you respect that angle. I think you do. 
But I think what we got to get to a little bit more is Patty Kane, Patrice Bergeron, Matt Dumba. I want your take on Dumba. A lot of these guys still, though, including Martin Jones, it makes sense that they're still out there, I think, overall. Injuries, age, inconsistencies at times, but they still bring value. How much value? You'll find out after the break. You'll also find out that today's episode is brought to you by our friends at FanDuel. Take your first swing at betting on the MLB on FanDuel and get 10 times your first bet amount in bonus bets up to 200 bucks. That's right. Just 20 bucks and you'll land $200 in bonus bets back, win or lose. That's 200 you can spend betting on everything from the money line to the over-under to who you think cranks that first dinger, and all on an app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Plus, when you win, you get paid out instantly. There's no better place to bet on the MLB than in FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Sign up today. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get up to 200 bucks back in bonus bets. That's FanDuel. Dot com slash locked on FanDuel, official partner of Major League Baseball. And thank you so much for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast your first listen every single day. We are a part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where you can find your favorite team from all four major sports mm-hmm. leagues, including the NCAA, your team every single day. And thank you so much for tuning in to the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast every single day. Hit the subscribe, hit the follow button. We appreciate all that love and support out there. And thank you so much for tuning in for today's episode. Continuing on the conversation of some of the top remaining unrestricted free agents Mm -hmm. of the 2023 summer offseason so far. Patrick Kane, Matt Dumba, Patrice Bergeron, Martin Jones, and many, many other. Those are the names that we're going to be talking about. We just wrapped Mm -hmm. up talking about Vladimir Tarasenko. I agree with you. I think him going to Ottawa would fill out everything that they really need at this Mm. point. They need some veteran uh, experience with those young guys in the top six group. And a guy like Vladimir Tarasenko, a left shot playing on the right side, always, always a dangerous, Mm. uh, always a dangerous player um, with Vladimir Tarasenko. But Patrick Kane also traded to the New York Rangers at the trade deadline. Very short stint. Um, you know, obviously has that connection. He's from Buffalo, New York, very close to home for him. Mm. And again, this is the this is the first time in a while where we've really seen the injuries and age start to affect Patrick Kane significantly. Yes. I thought yes, he sir. still had a very decent season. Fantasy mm. wise, it's questionable. I did trade for him in my keeper dynasty fantasy league. Um, you know, midway through it was a I can't Mm -hmm. remember exactly what the trade was, but finished with 57 points in 73 games, had 21 goals, over 200, over 200 shots. You're obviously not going to get anything from the blocks and hits and penalty minutes, but Mm -hmm. overall a decent season, but you can see the, the slowness coming on for Patrick Kane. Most definitely. And this is a tough one for me, Steele, because You know, I'm going to age myself again here, but one of the moments that I remember the most is the Patrick Kane squeaker that he scored to win them the cup that year that I watched. Philadelphia, yes, sir. Yeah, I gone Philadelphia, and he's one of those guys. He's the face of the game. You know, I believe him and Kane went back-to-back on NHL for, you know, EA Sports for the game for Jell. Patty Kane is just one of those faces of the league over the past number of years. Yeah, he's not Sid, he's not Ovi, but he's right there. He's also one of the best American players to ever do it. And he's one of those guys that you can't ignore the injuries, right? I'm not going to come on here and say, like, expect a miraculous season for Patty Kane. But I wanted to say this. Never, ever count out a guy like Patrick Kane. He is a gamer. He is the kind of player that just when you expect him to fade from relevancy, he's going to come on and prove you wrong. And is that a bit of a bold take? Maybe considering that we saw exactly what you said, Steele, he's banged up. This foot speed is down. Yeah. These are all obvious concerns. I, again, want to see a little bit. I might be willing to take my last pick in the draft, leave it for Patrick Kane. That's where I'm thinking because, look. <laughs> You're what thinking if he, he slides goes? all the way to the last round? I think he might because, well, here, here it is, Steele. I know 57 points is 57 points, especially in 73 games. But where is he going to go? 
That's my question. So right now, seeing that I want to draft him higher than the last round or two, I just don't see it, especially because of everything you just said. I just still see him as a draftable player, and we got to keep our eye on what team he goes to. Maybe he goes to Buffalo. It, that would be so spicy. Mm-hmm. It is. It is very. Uh, you know, it is very questionable on where he goes. And, and you he know, looked the pretty and banged up, it, dude. That's all. It's surprising though, because looking at his stats and everything, you know, going all the way back to 2015, 2016 season, he played four straight seasons of full yeah. uh, full seasons. That's he why missed, I don't want to count him out. I'm not saying I know, count I, him out. He, you know, he played a full year. You know, it was a it was a shortened season, but he played the full season, fifty six games in twenty twenty. He missed points. he mi- he missed four games in twenty one. He missed nine games in twenty twenty two. This last year, yeah. so he hasn't missed too many games since you know going he back hasn't. eight years. But he's been injured. He's been banged up during. You know, he like you said, he's a gamer. He he plays the game and banged up. Let's just also remember how many cup runs and playoff runs he was so important uh, importantly a part Mm -hmm. of and playing those extra added mileage on his body and he's 34 years old but i want to say he's in old 34 and that's because of the success he's had so the injury last year and just seeing him really slow down for the first time you've never seen that really from patty kane so i just be very very apprehensive I can't though knock a single bit of what this guy brings to the table because I think the an astute GM out there with the right situation. And again, I'm not sure what that is. We might have to bring this situ this contract or sorry, this topic back, but it might be a real spicy one if the right GM can pluck him. Value's still there, Steel. I'm just wary of the mileage on this body. And I will say this. The year prior, he had 92 points in 70, 78 games Nasty. in the season. So, you know what? It was a very Nasty. tough season last year for the Chicago Blackhawks. It wasn't just him on the team that was struggling as well. Um, but, yeah, mm-hmm. we'll, we'll have to see where Patrick Kane goes. I don't think I agree with you that he'll fall all the way down to the last round of the draft. But Let's we see. will have to wait Let's and see. see where Patrick Kane ends up going in next year's fantasy draft same goes for a guy like patrice bergeron we don't know what will happen with bergeron will he re-sign with the boston bruins on a short-term deal will he just end up hanging up the laces hanging up the skates and calling it a career uh with the boston bruins or maybe this is an absolute long shot could we potentially see patrice bergeron in a different jersey than black and yellow i don't think that's very likely but uh, again, anything's possible. <laughs> Hopefully, he is back in a in a Bruins jersey. Uh, because again, it, it, we're seeing the age being a, a significant factor for a lot of the guys that we grew up watching our entire yep. lives. Most definitely, it's a little bit. And uh, you and I actually talked a lot about the changing of the guard this season, yeah. right? Not not seeing Ovechkin in there, you know, missing out on the on the Sidney Crosby aspect yeah. of it all, right? Like this was one of those weird things that now you're starting to see it change. And that's just where we're at, Steele. And as one of those kind of also come back moments very quickly to circle back to the salary cap and Toronto. You mentioned this to me off air today. The Toronto Maple Leafs are over eight million dollars over the cap right now. Yeah. The next the next highest team, and this is where I wanted to hit you with these stats because you all highlighted this already. The next highest team is the Tampa Bay Lightning at 3.9, then the Vancouver Canucks at 2.4, and the Vegas Golden Knights at 2.2. So the Toronto Maple Leafs are almost double over the cap as the next highest team. Aye, so aye, aye. things are not done in Toronto. So let's keep our eyes peeled on that situation. But I hear you. This is the changing of the guard. Patty Kane, Vladdy Tarasenko. Patrice Bergeron, these are some of the, you know, pillars of the offensive fantasy game that we've come to be used to, and it's changing. That's why you're keeping it tapped to the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast. Tapped all summer long. Thank you so much for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast your first listen every single day. Make sure you hit that subscribe, hit the follow button. You can find our episodes Monday through Friday, 7 o'clock in the morning. Eastern time is when you can get them on your way to work or whatever you're doing seven o'clock in the morning though is when they drop 
on your favorite podcast platform. We appreciate all that love and support out there. Thank you so much for tuning in every single day. And Patrice Bergeron, hoping to be back with the Boston Bruins next season because I'd love to have him on my fantasy hockey team, Mm -hmm. even at the age of, what will he, he will be 30, he will be 38 years old on July 24th. So just a couple weeks away for our boy over there, Bergeron. Uh, He'll be 38 years old. Joe Pavelski style up there. He's getting up there in age with the numbers. You know how you like the numbers over there, Flip. Still, you know how I feel about birthdays. You know how I feel about numbers. Hashtag Mark Giordano. (laughs) Hashtag Joe Pavelski. But listen here. The fact that there's someone three years my senior still getting it done at elite levels like Patrice Bergeron kind of blows me away. Kind of makes me think what I've been doing. Maybe a few too many Bud Lights on the weekend. But we're not here to talk about Uncle Flip. We're here to talk about what's actually going on on the ice. Patrice Bergeron. I don't see him walking away steel, but here's how I look at it. My brain tells me he doesn't walk away because looking at the numbers, he is still such an effective forward. He won over 60% of his face-offs. He got over 50 points, almost 60. He was still banged up and he played like a warrior. He can still yeah. bring it. 249 shots on goal. He's still very fantasy relevant. In my Keeper Dynasty League this year, Steele, he averaged almost five fantasy points a game because it's a a a banger league as well. So he can really still bring it. My gut tells me he might walk away because as much as we saw what we saw from the Boston Bruins last year, can he go through the rigors of another NHL season? 19 NHL years in the NHL, Steele. 1,294 games. There is a speaking of mileage on a body. My gut says he retires. I don't see him coming back. But my brain says he does because he can still obviously play at a very elite level yeah. and bring it fantasy-wise. He can bring it fantasy-wise. And, and maybe my uh, computer right now is glitching out because I can't even see Patrice Bergeron's name under uh you know under the boston bruins on the cap friendly <laughs> over here so i don't know what's going on uh usually it has his name with a ufa beside <laughs> it but it's not there right now anyways he does bring the fantasy value and at 38 years old again i really I, I connect i compare him to a guy like joe pavelski you know parks himself in front of the net uh big big body you know screens the goaltender gets those rebounds in front he's a great passer he's a great facilitator he's a great leader for this team. I, yeah. I, oh, yeah. I'm with you. I, I don't think he retires. I think he's got one more year left. He's played 19 seasons in the NHL every single year with the Boston Bruins. I think he's got one more year in him with the Boston Bruins. And then after next season, he calls it a career, a fresh, clean 20 years in the national mm-hmm. hockey league. Mm-hmm. He's not playing on any team other than the Boston Bruins. That's yes. clear. We're not here to speculate. I'm just speculating that he has nothing left to prove in this league. He is an absolute warrior. He's respected in all circles. And the fact that I'm speaking so highly about him and I have such disdain for that team and that organization <laughs> as obviously a tier boy Toronto Maple Leafs fan, and I'll be clear about that. This guy is a legend. This guy is a player that I would have loved to have on any team that I would have run He's bled for the Canadian flag as well. He's been a legend in international Mm -hmm. play. I absolutely have nothing but the utmost respect for a player like Patrice Bergeron, who's played through steel debilitating injuries in his career. If we want to just talk about that, what a warrior this guy has been. Also though, he seems to be a really smart man and a family man. And if you're looking at the standings and you're looking at what you just had to go through, the Toronto Maple Leafs, Florida Panthers, New York Rangers, how about the Devils and others? I might be going, I might be going home and taking care of the family and letting my ring on my finger do its talking. And I'll wait for my Hall of Fame call (laughs) in not very long, Steel, because this guy's going to be in there sooner than later. Yeah, and it might be a little bit harder for him to walk away after Boston re-signed uh, Milan Lucci, bringing back Lucic hey. to the Boston Bruins. Hey. You know, a guy who's won a cup with Bruins, you know, with Bergeron, with Marchand, with mm. all those guys, Kretschy as well. So 
Might be right. a little tougher for Bergeron to walk away. Matt Dumba, though, uh, of yeah. the Minnesota Wild, he has been, it seems like, on the trade block, uh, you know, every, yeah. for the last few seasons, you know, a guy who could be traded in the offseason, who could be leaving the Minnesota Wild. He got healthy scratch during the postseason as well a few times. Mm-hmm. But right. fantasy value-wise, it's so hard to put him – it's so hard to predict where he, if he's if he's draftable, if he's just a guy you pick up every mm. few weeks or so if you need him. But great yep. for banger leagues. Yep. He got 81 penalty minutes, 116 yep. blocks, 104 yep. hits. But yep. I, I mean, 14 points well, in 79 games is just abysmal. Yeah. Well, two things right off the jump. He gives the puck away way too much. The giveaway way takeaway numbers are almost two to one looking at that. You know me with the numbers and the digits, but I'm pretty sure that says he's over a two to one giveaway yep. takeaway ratio and not in the good way. My thing with Matt Dumba Steel is he needs a change of scenery. Exactly yeah. what you said. Too many years on the rumor mill, too many times on the chopping block, and maybe too many times in the coaches' dog houses for many different reasons. And I think a guy like Matt Dumba at only 28 years old, maybe the opposite of some of the things we've been saying, not too much mileage on this body at only 10 years in the NHL. I think there's still a lot more in the tank and I would really like to see him change scenery. You mentioned it, the offensive numbers way down. Do I think that 50 point season is, you know, more reflective of where he's at? No, but I think maybe the 35 point season, the year before 34 points, I love him in the 35 to the 40 point range. You bring in all the hits, you bring in the blocks and the pims. He becomes very fantasy relevant as a back end D man for banger and fantasy leagues that way. If he can run that back offensively and start fresh somewhere else, I think I would take a flyer on him. Yeah. And you know what? I wouldn't even mind steel because the D core is hard to fill. I'll take him in the back end of the draft as well. If he moves to a team, I like. It's those peripheral stats that really Matt Dumba brings for fantasy value wise. And it'll be interesting to see what type of contract he gets. Maybe it's one of those one year or two year short stint sort of deals where, you know, it's let me see what you can type, what you can do out there. The prove show me. me, Yeah. Show me, prove me what you can do out there on the Mm -hmm. ice. And then we'll Mm -hmm. talk about a long-term deal. Do you want to get to Martin Jones uh, before we wrap things up real quick? Let's wrap it up very quickly because I think you and I have also talked a lot about Martin Jones over the course of the year. And look, he got the benefit of playing on a really good Seattle Kraken team this year. And his bad metrics got inflated by, look, 27 (laughs) wins, 13 losses in three, you know, 27, 13, and three with three shutouts can't be ignored. But maybe take a peek inside an almost three goals against and an 886. And then look at it. Grubauer is the guy. It was clear. He took the crease. But what I wanted to say with Martin Jones was he is not a draftable goalie, but some team out there in the NHL is going to take him as their number two. And you and I have talked at length about what it means as a fantasy GM to be able to pounce on a good backup situation. Shall there be an injury or your team is just bad at the start of the year and you need a little bit of influx. That's the only angle I really see fantasy wise with Martin Jones steel because his, you know, deeper numbers were bad and he might play (laughs) on a team that's not nearly as good or good defensively as the Seattle Kraken, because we know that decor prop this goalie up big time. They did very much so as well as they scored a ton of goals during the regular season. So, uh, you know, a benefit to that win, you know, that that record he has 26, 13 and three for Martin Jones. Many, 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 many UFAs still out there this summer. And we're just waiting. We're hoping that they'll be signed up soon. So we have more to talk about because we love talking about these NHL free agent signings. Mm -hmm. Who's going to go where? What will teams look like? We'll have that all summer long. Thank you so so much for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast your first listen every single day. Make sure, again, you're tuning in Monday through Friday, 7 o'clock in the morning Eastern time is when you can find all of our episodes. And thank you so much for tuning in for today's episode with Flip and I. Have a great day. Good luck with all your summer bets out there. And we shall see you back here again tomorrow. Peace.